Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. And I cannot believe I even still remember that this series exists! 2008 was an innocent time for the show. It had a humble beginning, no theme song, no opening greeting, and no memes about proclaiming my gender. No, all I had was a crappy comic and minor interruptions to try to promote Revolution of the Mask. Yeah, I really need to get around to releasing issues 3 and 4. But anyway, yeah, Cinnamon number 11. It sucked. Although, looking back on it after reviewing stuff like Marvel or Bimbo's in Time, or Nova Girls, or Cry for Justice, or Holy Terror, or any of the many, MANY other horrid comics I've reviewed, was it really that bad? Oh dear lord, yes! I'm not even sure how to describe it these days, not helped by the fact that I was basically reviewing the comic near the end of its run. Cinnamon is apparently a superheroine, and potentially a minor, despite the fact that the comic seems dedicated to showing off her nipples through her outfit, and she fights a reawakened communist supervillain named Terror Dawn. Terror Dawn herself has her history explained in a backup story, where we learn she had a redneck communist boyfriend who spouted this bit of insanity. I love you, darling, but I love Stalin more. I don't know how to love him. The comic was also chock full of TV show cameos like Mulder and Scully and Boris and Natasha. Hell, I actually missed one. Terror Dawn attacks a Pamela Anderson lookalike on the beach. There may have been more references than that, but unfortunately I can't double check that because I don't have a copy of Cinnamon Number 11 anymore. I'm guessing I destroyed it at some point in some sort of rage-induced blackout and I just can't remember. Either that or I sold it at a convention to some poor fool who now has that inflicted upon them. Either way, I sadly don't have the comic anymore to double check. I had to re-watch the episode to remind myself of what happened, and I HATE watching my old episodes, so I'm in an even worse mood now! But the question now becomes, how did all this stupidity start? What's the full story here? Well, let's dig into Cinnamon Number 1 and see if we can discover the secret origin of this truly memorable character who was last seen... Nowhere. So in this issue of Playboy, and I'm sorry, I got confused for a second with this cover. Actually, a better joke would be this issue of Empire Lust, since that's where Cinnamon's outfit seems to draw the most inspiration from. And that's being generous and saying there was an inspiration beyond, man, I want to draw porn, but I don't want the social stigma that might come from that. So instead, we have Cinnamon on a dark background with kind of a purpley glow around her. All hail the glow cloud. I'll give credit to the cover in that she's not pulling the subway sandwich thighs look while she's flying, but that's assuming she's flying and not doing some kind of bizarre dance. I don't even know why it isn't just porn. It's already labeled as being for mature readers. 
You've made her outfit two straps and a thong. Just give in already. What the hell is even her expression here? Is she a superheroine or is she just an expert at modeling with her mouth half open and her eyes half closed? Catfish Comics is pleased to present the pulse-pounding, power-packed, potentially perverse, pulchritudinous premiere issue of Cinnamon! Ah, you screwed up the alliteration! Either use S-words or call it Pinnamon! Also, I have to censor this page because they drew her nipples through the red tape she was wearing. Classy. We open with Cinnamon flying through the air, and the foreshortening makes it appear as if she's bending her body into a U-shape, what with her front perfectly upright while her legs are also up in the air behind her. The Golden Valley Chamber of Commerce has a pamphlet which described the city as having a magical combination of big city sophistication and small town quality of life. But then again, they were very drunk when they wrote it. That's as far as you go! Drop that man, or I swear I'll boot your butt into orbit! Time to rewrite the pamphlet. Zounds! She said butt! Clearly there is no sophistication in this place! Cinnamon is talking with some other woman who doesn't believe in wearing a bra, what with her cleavage-exposing combination jacket and leotard. She's just robbed a bank and is holding a guy's head between... uh giant glowing pliers. Okay? Okay, cute stuff. Show me what you've got. Make it quick. I've thought up a new twist on bobatizing. I'm eager to try out on this fellow. If you mean using those giant pliers, I think you were going for the wrong head, lady. It seems this villain has some kind of power to manipulate or create matter, since the pliers disappear and she unleashes some energy ribbons at Cinnamon. You know, I bet you'd make a lovely present. Let's see how you look with a bit of gift wrapping. And indeed, the ribbons have formed into actual ribbons with a bow tied around her too. Did you keep the receipt? However, Cinnamon manages to burst out of the ribbons and fire some concussive blasts, forcing the villainess, named Infima, to create a giant comb to lash onto Cinnamon's hair and pull her away. Ow! When I get loose, ow! I'll bust you! Ow! You're ah, not fixing my ah, split ends! After some more back-and-forth hitting between the two, Infima forces Cinnamon to let her go by holding a police car over the heads of two officers, saying she needs to save them or else she'll drop the car on them. Ugh, I should have stayed a shoe salesman. From shoe salesman to police officer, a natural career path. After Infima flies off on a giant paper airplane, so she was Yamako Reedman this whole time, Cinnamon berates the police officers for getting in her way. Apparently she forgot that she's the vigilante around here. Also, it's not their fault that Infima lifted a car over their heads. However, the police officers don't seem to mind. What a babe! I'd love to give her the best five minutes she'll ever have. <laughs> you think you'd last five minutes. Same here. Yeah, she should have let the car drop on you. But you know something? Other cities have heroes who like to help cops and innocent bystanders. And I'm sure they have cops who aren't lecherous and useless. Later, Cinnamon is returning to her apartment in a big trench coat. I just wish there was some way I could go straight to my apartment without anyone seeing me. You don't wear a mask! A man comes up behind her and grabs her, holding a knife up and threatening to cut her throat if she doesn't come along with him to have some fun. Naturally, Cinnamon is pretty pissed about this, flips the dude over her head, and criminy! She crushes his hand so much it spurts blood! Ah, so we finally found the inspiration for the unaired Wonder Woman pilot. Pants to be darkened indeed. She holds him up by one hand, which is pretty impressive since he looked to be taller than her, but he's at least several inches off the ground, and says scum like him shouldn't walk the street. But all he does is scream in pain and horror, apparently also getting his leg broken by her too. And her response to his screams of pain is nothing except this expression on her face. Oh man, we have ourselves another soul as gentle as the fixer. We cut to the police station, where Cinnamon tosses his bleeding, beaten body. We've a vigilante who ships us her handiwork. 
No idea what this guy's done, of course. Whatever he did, I bet he won't do it again. Right, scum? Cinnamon knows how to deal with your kind. Things have worked out so well for us ever since we abandoned due process of law. Hello, my friends. While we wait for these commercials to pass, I will entertain you all with a song. And now we're back. I hope the song entertained you. See what I'm up against? Well, it looks like you're against bras, judging by those nipples poking through. Speaking of nipples, we cut to Cinnamon, naked in a bath. Naturally, Batman is watching somewhere, and I have to censor this. Also, her bathtub apparently sits in some kind of gray, featureless void. And it's too small to fit her without her lifting her legs up into the air. Anyway, she's thinking about her failure against Infima. She's the first super-powered foe I've ever met. My first true test. And she got away! Well, whose fault is that? You're the one who can't catch up to the woman escaping on a friggin' paper airplane. A guy enters the bathroom, whom Cinnamon recognizes, and she fires at him. But all it does is shred his clothes and reveal a muscular physique, although no nipples. Because of course Cinnamon used up the nipple quota for this comic. And with that overreaction done, all we learn is that this guy is making her an offer, she refuses, and apparently they've been supplying money to her anyway. I can see none of the money we gave you went towards furnishing this place. And I see that no money went to the artist to draw furniture. And we learn Cinnamon's real name is Cindy. I can't recall if we learned that fact from the other issue I reviewed, nor do I particularly care. Smooth move, having your superhero name match your real name. Still nude, she approaches a mirror and tells herself she doesn't want their help anymore. Why would I go back? Why would I want to replay the past? That was the past. No! No! Damn you, ironic mirrors! A few days later, Cindy is looking at her mailbox while a guy talks to her, since he just moved in. Naturally, Cindy is not interested and just walks off. No rings on her fingers, and I've never seen her come in with anyone. She seems shy, but if I work at it, I could hit the jackpot! Dude, considering how her interactions with people have gone so far in this comic, your insides are going to end up looking like a Jackson Pollock painting. Another guy in the apartment just happens by with his boombox tuned to plot convenience news, which informs Cindy that Infima is attacking a highway. One swift but discreet costume change later. I don't really know how discreet it needs to be when literally her outfit can be hidden underneath a t-shirt and jeans. Hell, it could be low cut and it'd still be difficult to tell she had it. Cinnamon and Infima engage one another, with Infima even summoning up a barrage of various hammers. Including Thor's hammer, it would seem. Lots of Thor's hammers. Maybe she's supposed to be the woman who's going to be the new Thor. To the people of the future, I apologize for that joke, which was topical at the time of this video's release, but is now extremely dated. Also, what's the future like? Did we ever get another Star Trek TV series? And the almost plagiarism is interrupted by Cinnamon rushing in and grabbing her by the throat. Cinnamon notices a jewel at the base of her neck and tries to pull it off, but simply grabbing it causes Infima to gasp and wheeze as if she can't breathe. What the? Is that gem part of you? Nah, it's just a decoration for my tracheotomy. Infima manages to recover quickly and then creates an anvil that drops on Cinnamon's head. Way cool. All that's missing are the wild sound effects. Beep beep. What cartoons did you watch where they used beep beep for an anvil dropping? With Cinnamon unconscious, Infima stands over her. And for my next trick... Your next trick no doubt being to just look at the reader instead of the person you defeated. Also, is it natural for an unconscious person to lift their leg up like Cinnamon is doing? And then Infima leans down and starts making out with Cinnamon's unconscious body. Sexual assault! Thanks, comic. Cinnamon wakes up and decks Infima, sending her flying. Geez, try to show a little affection instead of the usual mindless violence, and look where it gets you. So I'm assuming the name Infima comes from the word infamous. Yeah, I believe it, since I'm sure you're a registered sex offender, lady.
Some people are just way too uptight. And some people should be smothered by that giant pillow you created. Guess which category you fall into, Infima? Cinnamon, pissed off by what has happened, punches Infima in the back, and she's fine in the next panel. Gotta love sequential art where one panel doesn't accurately follow another. Cinnamon takes a piece of steel and wraps it around Infima's neck, blocking the jewel, and I presume her powers, though beats me if that's how it works. After another punch to the stomach, Infima's down and out and tossed inside the police station, knocking off the doors. Jeez, we just fixed that door this morning! Well, credit to the installation team, that's really damn fast. And so our comic ends with the police taking Infima into custody, also realizing that the metal band around her neck is blocking her powers. Well, you've won this round, my uptight foe. <laughs> no means no, Pep Squad, now beat it. But the sisterhood will free me soon enough, and then we'll see who gets the last laugh. Certainly not me. This comic sucks. A few positives I'll give. Despite some hiccups here and there, I actually do like the artwork, at least in terms of realistic-looking people. Well, sure, everybody looks like a model, but points for resembling human beings and not Rob Liefeld-esque rubber band bodies. Still, this continues to raise the question of why this isn't just a porn, because it really seems like it wants to be, well, with the nudity and the nipples. And at least in this one, we don't have tons of unnecessary cameos from other series. Another positive I can give is the last few pages of the comic, ostensibly pages of the Golden Valley Gazette that help shape the universe a bit. There's even a personal section that, according to the letters page, hints at a few future storylines. I admittedly do not care enough to try to learn what those are, but I appreciate that kind of effort regardless. The writing is bland. We really know nothing about Cinnamon other than vague hints. There isn't a number zero issue or anything to explain her origins, like where her powers come from, or why she evidently doesn't like helping innocent bystanders or cops. We didn't even get a name for the guy who visited her. Also, what the hell is this writer's fascination with having people molest Cinnamon? It is, quite frankly, creepy. Speaking of the writer, in the aforementioned letters page, he talks about the nude scenes, saying he had misgivings about them, but then seems to get very contradictory about why they exist. To keep it out of the hands of children, which that mature reader's label should do just fine, and that too many kids are reading books they shouldn't be reading. Then why don't you make it all ages? He also admits he has no misgivings about using sex to sell the book. And if you're gonna use sex, what's the deal with the super tight outfits and the discreetly shaded disrobing scenes? How can a costume be tight enough to show off belly buttons, but not nipples? Um, we saw plenty of those in this comic. I'm not sure you're paying attention. Our response to all that pussyfooting around? Here's Cinnamon! Now she's naked! There! Come to think of it, that may not have been the most rational way to make our point. But this is comics. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Third, Mike likes to draw naked women. Why the hell didn't you just say that to begin with? Ugh! Now I remember why it's taken me almost 300 episodes to look at this series again.
Artist had a few things to say as well, stating that the nudity in the book is basically there because he wanted his comics to be realistic, and realistically, people would have sex. I believe that as the comic audience matures, so should the medium mature if it is to survive. Oh yeah, and there's so much maturity on display in this comic, I can tell you. But if you don't like it, don't read it. Okay.